Hello, America. I want to tell you about this guy and this book, um, Bonhoeffer, Pastor, Martyr, Prophet, Spy. Um, I've talked about uh, Bonhoeffer a couple of times on this program, and he is loved by the left. Oh, they love him. In fact, here's a, a year with Dietrich Bonhoeffer, forward by Jim Wallace. Hi, Jimmy. Jimmy loves the show. Um, Jim Wallace, of course, is the guy who's leading that Christian boycott against me. I think that's what Christ would do. Um, leading that Christian boycott against me in this uh, program and running ads about what kind of Christians would watch or listen to Glenn Beck. Thanks, Jimmy. I love you, too. There's a, there's a problem because the left likes to take uh, 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 Dietrich Bonhoeffer and say that he is um, a social justice guy. This book says, no, not so much. Who is Dietrich Bonhoeffer? He's a guy that you should know. This is a book that you should read. Why? I don't believe in coincidence. This is a book that the author told me I was compelled to write, didn't want to write it. I have to tell you, I didn't want to read about a guy who was being tortured uh, by Nazis either. Um, but it came into my hands, strangely, and I felt compelled that I should put it on the air. But then I got sidetracked on to Gandhi, and I was looking for an expert on Gandhi. And the author of this book happened to bump into somebody on my staff, and he was reading this book at the time. And he said, hey, you know, Dietrich Bonhoeffer was fascinated by Gandhi, said that Gandhi held the, off, uh, the answer. I called uh, Eric right away. Eric Metaxas, he is the author of Bonhoeffer, Pastor, Martyr, Prophet, Spy, and said, can you help me out with Dietrich Bonhoeffer and Gandhi? And tonight we want to spend a little bit of time talking about the churches in Germany and look for patterns here because it's important what happened to the churches in Germany, but really important because this guy stood and he's being recast now. Tell me, Eric, about the Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Bonhoeffer. Yeah. Bonhoeffer. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot there. Um, there's a lot there. But Bonhoeffer's, it, it's a fascinating thing because I wrote a book about uh, William Wilberforce called Amazing Grace. And people kept asking me, Fantastic. who are you going to write about next? Some people right. said, about whom are you next going to write? Those people were correct, by the way. I like the right. word whom. I'm a Yale English major. Right. But it. I thought there's only one person who captures my imagination, my heart, my mind, the way William Wilberforce did. And that's Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Bonhoeffer, in a nutshell, for folks who don't know, was a German pastor and theologian who got involved in the plot to kill Adolf Hitler. But he didn't, uh, wait, 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 back up. I'm li I'm, that's the short, I'm yeah. leaping ahead to say that's who he was. Okay. Uh, but to talk about how that happened, that's why we're right, here. Right, because he's, he's a guy who um, didn't want to be involved, tried to wake the churches up. They now say, uh, people like Jim Wallace say that he said that Christianity is dead, right. and uh, right. he was a social justice guy. Right. Well, it's almost hilarious, because when you look at the facts, the reason I say this, so I got into writing this book not knowing what I would find, because I'd heard these things about Bonhoeffer. People have presented it that sort of toward the end of his life, he kind of makes a weird left-hand turn and becomes a post-Christian humanist, whatever that means, I don't know, right. but somehow drifts away from biblical faith in Jesus Christ. That's not true. I didn't know until I did the research on the book, and what I discovered actually stunned me, because the opposite is true. His faith becomes stronger and stronger. 18 hours before he is sent to his death in Flossenburg concentration camp, he has a service for his fellow prisoners. He preaches a sermon. I mean, this guy went to the gallows with his faith in Jesus intact. And, and so, so none of that is true, and his legacy has effectively been hijacked uh, by the hard left, really by agnostics and atheists. Okay, this is, uh, America, this is important for you to know. This is an important book for you to read um, because he compelled to, was compelled to write it, um, prompted, dare I say. Uh, I felt prompted to bring the story to you, and we were in my office uh, a couple of months ago, and I said, I don't know what it's supposed to be used for, but somebody is supposed to get their hands on this book, and maybe it's you. This guy was amazing, was amazing, and a hero, uh, did, did you see um, uh, Valkyrie? You, you saw that? Sure. Yeah. A, 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 a amazing story and 
fearlessness. Yeah. That was this kind of guy. Oh, yeah. Well, no, the, the whole story of Valkyrie is in this book. That's why it's a thick book. There's a lot of, there were many plots, uh, or I should say there were many attempts on Hitler's life. The final one, I'll get to that in a minute if we want to go through the timeline. Yeah, because I don't think that. It the, all culminates in yeah, that. Yeah, the, the, the Hitler part it, is not as important to me as the standing up to the, the churches and saying, no, no, no. Right, that's Look right. Look what's happening. Right. And that's why in the title I call him a prophet, because the prophet speaks to the church. The prophet is trying to get the, the, the people of God okay. to be the people so of God. So what was happening at the church, what was happening in the churches early in Germany? Well, um, you got a number of things going on. First of all, you have theological liberalism. Okay, Bonhoeffer, he wanted to be a theologian at age 14. Uh, he decides to go to Berlin University, which is the finest place in the world to study theology, literally. Uh, so he goes there, but he is not a theological liberal. He is a Barthian, uh, people can look that up, uh, Karl Barth, and Bonhoeffer realizes that the God of the Bible is alive. He's not dead, it's not just these are texts we're studying, but most of the German theologians at that time looked at it as though, you know, all that stuff has been sort of disproved, so we're just going to study the texts. Bonhoeffer says, no, there's a God behind the texts, and he wants us to know him personally. So the climate of Germany in the, whatever, the first decades of the, the 20th century was a climate of you have two things going on. Number one, theological liberalism, where people don't really believe this stuff, but they continue to go through the motions. In many ways, what we have here now. Well, of course, yeah. absolutely. And this always happens to the church. You have these seasons that waxes and wanes where you have people who effectively take it for granted. I mean, Germany, in many ways, the parallels to the U.S. are stunning. And I didn't realize it until I did the research for this book. But when you have a country that thinks of itself as a Christian nation, the downside is you begin to take it for granted. You go, well, we're, we're a Christian nation. So Germany thought, hey, we gave the world Martin Luther, and he gave the world Protestants, and right. we're it. So we don't have to do anything. When I, when I saw, the, for, when I, I saw uh, speeches, um, I went to a, a museum of uh, film, and I saw old speeches of Adolf Hitler that he yeah. gave really early, and they are loaded with Jesus Christ stuff. I mean, they are oh, of course. loaded with Christianity He wanted to stuff. sell himself as a Christian because he understood that if he shows who he really is, and by the way, in the book I give chapter and verse on what the Nazis really believed, they were not only not Christians, they were Gentiles. So they were not Jews, but they, they were not Christians. They were pagans, basically. But he understood that he's dealing with a population that is vaguely Christian. Germany is a Christian nation. And that if he presents himself as bitterly opposed to Christianity, he will lose his power. Right. So he plays, I mean, right. this is the danger. When you have a nation that is sort of Christian in, in a very surfacey way, mm -hmm. uh, not mentioning any names, but the initials are USA. <laughs> uh, if you have that kind of a thing going on, you're very susceptible. So, so Hitler comes into the situation, and he basically plays the conservatives. He basically says that, you know, I'm against degenerate Bolshevism. I, I'm against the communists. I'm, I'm for values and so on and so forth. So he speaks, he talks the talk, but he is fundamentally opposed to actual Christianity. But he hides it because he knows that if he reveals it, bon he loses everything. When did Bonhoeffer first figure him out? Because he was the first guy. From, yeah. From the beginning, From right? day one. And I think that's because Bonhoeffer's father was a scientist, and the whole Bonhoeffer family was trained to think rigorously. Uh, they, they were not able to be fooled. They, they, they were really some of the finest minds in Germany. This is an amazing family, and I go into yep, that in the book. But, but they were trained to think clearly. So number one, Bonhoeffer thinks very clearly. Number two, his family was very well connected in social circles in Berlin, so they knew people who were in the know, and they knew before Hitler became chancellor who he was, that he's a vulgar, fundamentally anti-German, anti-Christian narcissist, a maniac, basically. They knew this. The whole family knew it. They all got involved in the plot to kill Hitler. When Hitler became chancellor, right. uh, Bonhoeffer was on the air, and was he taken off the air? Y yeah. Well, two days uh, in, in January 31st, 1933, Hitler becomes chancellor. Two days later, three days later, Bonhoeffer goes on the air and gives a radio speech. And this, in the speech, he basically dissects the whole idea of the Fuhrer principle. That's another chapter in the book. This idea this, it was very popular in Germany of the Fuhrer, the leader. I won't go into it now, but Bonhoeffer dissects it, really rips it to shreds. Uh, and the, a, the people thought that the Nazis cut off the broadcast, but now it doesn't seem that that's what happened. But the bottom line is, uh, he gives this speech days after Hitler becomes chancellor. You want to talk about brave. I mean, this was not the way the winds were blowing in Germany at the time, but from that day on, all the way till, till his death 12 years later, Bonhoeffer is vehemently against okay. the Nazis.